somebody messaged me on social media and asked me like, Hey, what's up with alkaline water? You know, does it incre- increase blood pH? If so, does it even matter? And, you know, one of the things that comes up a lot, there's a lot of confusion with these, uh, alkaline diets, alkaline water. You know, one of the questions people ask is just simply, is it possible to change blood pH with these types of interventions? And I think a lot of people in the evidence-based community take a little bit of a shortcut to the answer. No, I don't think that's necessarily true. So we can change blood pH. It's just to a very small extent, uh, you know, with these types of nutritional interventions. And, you know, one of the first places I went with this is like, let's just go straight to the sodium bicarbonate literature, right? Like it's a a very basic solution that people ingest. And we look at blood pH after ingestion, after exercise. And we do see uh, in many many cases, a statistically significant increase in blood pH. Um, But human blood always going to be slightly alkaline unless you're in, in a, you know, potentially precarious situation where it's become, you know, blood pH is getting dysregulated. Um, so, you know, some type of acidosis is, is happening that's clinic clinically relevant, but generally speaking, we're going to try to keep our blood pH between 7.35 and 7.45. And so, yeah, when we when we, you know, consume an extremely basic beverage, um, in high amounts, you know, so a big dose of sodium bicarbonate, for example, whether it's capsules or beverage or whatever, we might see a, a statistically significant increase in pH. Um, I, I still don't know if alkaline water is going to get you there, though. There, because well, I mean, if, yeah. if, if you're talking about 20, depending on your size, like 15 to 30 grams of sodium bicarbonate taken before exercise, dude, that's that's a lot more bicarbonate than you would be consuming in like a liter of alkaline water. Yeah. There was the reason I if expanded you, out into that literature was because I did see like one or two studies where there was a statistically significant increase as it was reported because the samples were enormous, but it just did not matter. It was like the small, it, it was not the same, the same magnitude as mm-hmm. sodium bicarbonate, but it was like, yeah, we found this effect. I assume there was an enormous correlation from pre to post test that that kind of helped the p value along. The magnitude was just so small, it couldn't possibly matter. But I expanded out because I was like, okay, are there other, is there a precedent by which consuming an alkaline, you know, a, a basic alkaline beverage like, you know, a sodium bicarbonate intervention? is there a precedent for this Mm -hmm. where we could see an increase? And so the answer is yes. But the answer is also that I just, when it comes to to alkaline water, like it's a bit of a shortcut to say like, no, it absolutely never could possibly have any measurable impact on pH, but it just doesn't matter. Like the, the idea that alkaline water, you're going to consume it and it's going to have a positive effect on I mean, they make all sorts of claims about stuff ranging from bone health all the way to like, cancer prevention. Are you going to consume alkaline water that's going to change your blood pH? Probably not. Uh, Even if there was an effect, it'd be so small as to be completely negligible. And will it impact any relevant health-related outcome? None that I can think of. Uh, So functionally, it doesn't matter the answer to this question. Like, is there any reason to be drinking alkaline water? In my opinion, no. Uh, But I, I did want to at least acknowledge like there, there are ways that blood pH can change to a measurable, measurable degree, but the body has so many redundant mechanisms to keep it within a fairly tight operating range. The pH thing just doesn't seem to matter. Like you can try to drive it over 7.45, but I mean, alkaline water, like you said, ain't going to do it. I mean, that also still wouldn't be a good thing. No, it'd be terrible. It'd be terrible. (laughs) When people talk about uh, like health risk from blood pH dysregulation, they're generally thinking about pretty extreme acidosis. Yeah. I mean, if you could put yourself in a comparable state of alkalosis, that would be just as bad. It would not. Yeah, that's yeah. It would not be good. It's kind of like one of those things, um, I I think kind of a slightly analogous situation is when people talk about uh, doing all sorts of weird stuff with sodium potassium balance. Mm -hmm. And it's like, 
it's so important to physiological function that there are a lot of redundant mechanisms to keep it within a, a tight operating range to the extent possible. And in the off chance you are able to override that stuff, it's bad, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Not good. Yeah. So, um, when it comes to alkaline water, uh, the, the reason I brought up the study was just because someone was, um, they were confused. You know, they, they said like, Hey man, uh, everyone's saying that this can't increase blood pH, but here's a study on PubMed, which is supposed to mean something. And it did. Mm -hmm. And I looked at it and I said, yes, it did. It was statistically significant. It was physiologically meaningless. And that's a good thing. <laughs> you know, if, if all of a sudden blood pH was nine, you're screwed. Yeah. You're so screwed. It wouldn't happen, but but yeah, so alkaline water, not worth your time, not worth your money. Um, but if you ever see, um, I think it's good to know that when you're looking at other research, like, so for example, sodium bicarb, you shouldn't look at a study that says, oh, by the way, blood pH increased P is 0.04. Shouldn't look at that and say, well, this study got botched mm -hmm. because that that's not technically accurate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you, you tried to, res you tried to address that question, uh, respectfully. Sure. I just want to dunk a little bit. Uh, I would say, God, probably a dozen different times. Like th this isn't just a one or two time occurrence. I'll stumble across on my like Instagram discover page, um, like health tips, yeah. Instagram accounts. And I love that shit. Like I, <laughs> people probably have a completely inaccurate assumption of what my, what my media consumption habits are. I spend virtually all of my time seeking out good information either on PubMed or journal websites or talking to people who I respect. I, I consume virtually no kind of like solid quote unquote fitness industry content. Like I know there are people out there doing good work. I just, I just don't read it. Um, when I am consuming non-serious content, I'm looking for the trash. I, <laughs> I want to see the garbage. I love it. I think a lot of people see that stuff and they get frustrated. They're like, oh no, the state of the industry. This is so bad. I'm very nihilistic. I fundamentally don't think anything is going to get that much better. So I just bathe in it. I, <laughs> I enjoy it. I find it so funny. Um, so anyway, in wading into just the pure depths of Instagram bullshit, I've come across, like I said, probably at least a dozen posts from health and fitness influencers saying, look, you need to alkalize your body. That's good for you. It's going to prevent cancer. It's going to give you so much mental clarity and energy. And here's some tips to do it. First, consume al alkaline water. Duh. Of course, everyone knows that. That's the good stuff. But here's another tip. Did you know uh, citrus also alkalizes your body? So put a put a squeeze of lemon juice in your <laughs> alkaline water. And I'm sure 95% of people listening to this understand why that's funny. It, <laughs> pH isn't, it's not a magical thing. Uh, pH stands for potential hydrogen. Um, so if it's and so it's basically a measure of how much hydrogen, which like free hydrogen, that is acid, uh, how much free hydrogen a thing can accept. Uh, and so like that, that's a pure kind of like applied chemistry base based measurement. If you put an acid in a basic substance, it necessarily raises the pH or uh, necessarily lowers the pH and makes it more acidic. So, I mean, if, if alkaline water could elevate blood pH, make it more basic, it does. I don't give a shit if you're claiming that there are <laughs> magical properties of lemons that can also increase blood pH. If you put acidic lemon juice in alkaline water, that shit's not alkaline water anymore, or at least you're making it less alkaline than it previously was. Absolutely incredible. I love it so much. Uh, if you find bad fitness content, send it to me. Uh, and not just if if it's just like a one off where someone's just kind of like, ah, they post some workout tips and ah, whatever. And and they just have a stinker. I don't care about that. That's not the good stuff. You want the shock value. I want I want the worst of the worst. And here's the gold mine. 
if you find a uh, a single account that like 40 to 70 percent of what they post is pure garbage send it to me i love it i want to fill my instagram feed with meme pages dog pages and the worst fitness content imaginable so uh anyway that's all i'm gonna say if if you come across someone who's pushing alkaline water in combination with citrus fruit cut cut them out of your life and put them into mine you should expand you you mentioned dog pages really any mammal will do I, i've got a lot of raccoon pages i've got some bear pages I, i'm a sucker for animal friend accounts what, what does that mean like two animals of a different species that are buddies yeah yeah okay like, yeah i like that cross species friendships yeah i like that a lot um but yeah yesterday i was pretty deep looking at a bunch of panda content the red panda mm-hmm. very cute very good stuff um but i guess the moral of the story is don't, there's no reason to drink alkaline water, but um, technically, you know, certain interventions could have a statistically significant significant effect on blood pH, um, but it's still going to stay within that tight range that that's typical because, I mean, we're good at managing that and we're pretty lucky that we're good at managing that. Um, there was one other thing I was going to say about this and I have completely lost it. Um, if it comes back to me, I will let you know. Do I see you? I, I see in the outline you have some stuff about breathing and how that regulates um, pH. No, I was going to get into the mecha- mechanisms of how we regulate pH, but we're just good at it um, and good for us. I'm, I'm oh, proud if, of us for if that. You wanna alkal- if you want to alkalize your body, uh, one thing you could do is just hyperventilate for a while. Yeah. Like if, if you... There was want- a... a, a um, didn't you cover that in mass? I did, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if, if you wanted to just see like, hey, if I were to alkalize my body, how would that make me feel? You can get kind you can get relatively close to the limits of human blood alkalinity just via respiratory alkalosis, uh, which you can get to just by hyperventilating. You're blowing off CO2 uh, and like the CO2 carbonic acid relationship like that. That's one of the ways that your body regulates pH via your lungs and kidneys. Like those are the two main things. So if you're just blowing off a ton of CO2 by hyperventilating, you put yourself in in a state of respiratory alkalosis. So, you know, if, if you want to see how you feel uh, as your as your blood pH approaches uh, 7.45, you can do it. Um, <laughs> have fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, th- I remembered the thing I was going to say. Thank you for uh, filling that time there with a lovely anecdote. With good advice. With good advice. Um, one thing to keep in mind if you are looking through this literature is that urine pH is way more responsive to dietary fluctuations than blood pH. So be sure not to confuse those. Sometimes we kind of convince ourselves, oh, blood values, urine values, whatever, it's all the same. But one of the redundant mechanisms, you know, we have all these overlapping mechanisms for pH control. One of the mechanisms is that your kidneys can kind of decide, hey, how, how much should we be pumping into the urine here to just kind of balance things out? Yeah, so, th- that is why blood pH can be so tightly controlled. Yeah, yeah. Like your, uh, w- what is it? Your entire blood volume filters through your kidneys every five minutes or something like that. I've never heard that, but I believe it. And it's also crazy at the same time. I believe that's the case. So yeah, if you uh, manage to create a relatively large perturbation in blood pH uh, via some non-pathological means, uh, you're you're going to, like all, all of that blood that you just alkalized is going to pass through your kidneys within the next five minutes. And if the level of alkalinity got high enough to even begin threatening uh, your body's homeostasis, you're just going to put a bunch of bicarbonate in your urine and now now your blood pH is back to normal. So that that is another thing. Like even if you can perturb blood pH, those perturbations are going to be very short lived. Oh, yeah. Very transient, very short lived. And, And that is why urine pH can vary quite a bit more like. If, if something kind of acidic is going on and you have more acidity in your blood, uh, 
those excess hydrogen ions are going to very quickly be filtered into urine and you're going to piss them out. If your body does get considerably more alkaline um, and, and you'll, you'll also uh, increase respiration to, to alkalize your blood as well. I, I don't want to make it sound like it's all urine. Uh, but yeah, if your body gets more alkaline, you'll just put more bicarbonate in your urine and, and get rid of it. So yeah, in, any perturbations, not only are they generally quite small, but they're also quite short-lived as well.